I'm Emma G. Rose, author of Contemporary Fantasy and Mythological Weirdness. I'm Shelley Shearer, author of Urban Fantasies and Cozy Mysteries. Welcome to Indie Book Talk. Join us as we explore the expanding universe of indie books. Welcome to Indie Book Talk. Today we're talking to Lisa Witty and Walter Hopgood, otherwise known as Squidgy Witty. Yes, really. And I'm going to let them tell you what they do. So who wants to jump in and tell me what the heck Squidgy Witty is? Well, I can start. I dragged Walter into the Stargate Atlantis fandom with the promise of pretty, pretty boys. (laughs) And that seemed successful. And then we went to cons and we started writing fiction together. And he's written a book on his own fabulous and then we started writing together to for publish rather than for fan fiction yeah we we basically we work really well together um i was driving down the road one time and i had this idea for a book and i uh turned to my husband uh who was in the passenger seat and i said write this down (laughs) falling in love with an ai and um so that was just this weird thing one sentence that came to me and um so lisa and i talked and we decided you know let's let's see if we can kind of make something uh with this and i went to a went to a doctor's appointment in a nondescript uh mall or you know not mall but uh, a nondescript area like a strip uh, mall yeah strip mall kind of uh in southeast portland and i'm like you know what we could write a we could write a series of books that's around a business park or a strip mall or something like that. And that's kind of how we started publishing together. Okay. Okay. Wait. So, so is the falling in love with an AI the same as the strip mall series or are these two different books? It's, it's actually the same. (laughs) It's the second book. And well, it's the first full book. The first book was the prequel. So it's the second book complicated. Yeah. (laughs) Just like we like it. Exactly. <laughs> so what is the title of this visionary masterwork? Uh, the the Falling in Love to, with an AI book is called AI Think I Love You. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's all Walter. He came up with that. <laughs> and, and titles are the hardest thing that you have to come up with. They are. We oh. say in stereo. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't remember who came up. Our our prequel that we have is called Foundations of Love. Um, and I don't, Lisa. I think that you came up with that one. I have no memory, as you know, but sure, I'll I'll take that credit. Okay. And then all of this is based on uh, uh, the series that we're writing is called Hearts Square H A R T S, and it's based on uh, our main characters in the prequel want to build a business park and they find this old man that they knew when they were, you know, kids and his name is Jacob Hart. And we figure, you know, Hart Square, there's a, there's the, you know, the homonym of H-E-A-R-T and, you know, Square, two hearts. So we thought that would be a really good foundation for what we wanted to call our romance series. Plus it's adorable. Yes. So I have a question about how the whole process works because I have tried co-writing with someone and it was unsuccessful. How do you how do you do it to make it work? Does someone like write a chapter, the next person writes a chapter? What what do you do? What usually happens is we brainstorm and plot out the outline of the book with much giggling and merriment. <laughs> and then Walter will sit down and pound the keys until he produces the words. And then he sends it to me. I tweak it. I add, I take away, I tweak, I add, I grammar, then send it back to him. And then we just go back and forth until we're happy with it. And we're like, well, you know, logically he wouldn't be at the department store because we said his car was broken down. Oh, dude. Then we got to fix all those little things. So it's give and take. Yeah. And it's, and it's what Lisa is, is not saying enough of what she does. She rewrites the entire book. <laughs> I mean, I will start out with, you know, a sentence that starts with A and ends with end. And she will rewrite the entire thing. Because I can, I'm in his brain. We're brain twins. Yes. Oh, 
Exactly. So, so you don't ever get upset or sad that the words you wrote become totally different words? No, absolutely not. No, okay, good. No, it's, it's, it's really easy. I mean, I, I trust her with what I've written. And I, I think in all the years that we've been writing together uh, for, for fanfic and profic, there has been one scene that we have not agreed on. One scene wow. in one 25,000 word thing that we wrote that I, that's the only thing that we've ever not agreed on. I have no memory of that, so it might as well be known. <laughs> it was the golf cart scene in the oh, ranchers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> golf cart scene. Yeah. Golf carts and how did it get there? And yeah, it's, it's just a weird little thing. And so. is the charge going to be long enough? And how fast do they go? And why are we bringing logic into this? Exactly. <laughs> Because I it's can't. Like the golf not. cart is just there. Exactly. <laughs> <Right>. Exactly. <laughs> That's a great track record. Yeah, we. I mean, yeah, we do. We do pretty well because we. We do as as I mentioned uh, uh, just recently this week. We finish. We finish each other's sandwiches very well. <laughs> I didn't think you caught that because I answered it and you didn't even yes. respond. I was laughing so hard. Oh, it's because. <laughs> yeah, it's because I've only had to work. They. I'm falling back into work again. So. Ugh. I mean, yeah. poor dear. Exactly. <laughs> so do you have um, a long series planned? Do you have any plan or are you just oh. going as you go and seeing what happens? Oh, see, this is what I need video because. <laughs> Don't show um, me the board. <laughs> exactly. Well, I can't show you the board, but so as a writer, my, my favorite tool is whiteboards. So I have one whiteboard on the wall right now that's got basically the main points on the left hand side and then prequel book one book two book three book four book five it's got characters it's got you know what's the meat cute um what's the conflict know. yeah exactly it's got all that what's the resolution oh, okay 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 wait 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 i am not a romance reader so someone explain to me what is meat cute Oh no, I got the wrong coffee and now I have to go back and swap it for the real one. And haha, ha, the cute guy is doing the same thing because he got mine and I got his. And we get to talking and suddenly there's love and sex. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so that adorable, how did they run into each other thing? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. exactly. It's, it's called a meat cute. Sometimes it's a meat ugly. Um, like the, <laughs> the, the next book in the series that I'm writing right now, it's, uh, it's not that it's a meat ugly, but it's a, who the hell are you <laughs> type of thing. So is that the one you're writing on your own? Or is that oh, no, no, no. This is, no, this is what uh, Lisa and I are working on together. Okay. This is the next, this is the next book in the series, the untitled, <laughs> uh, plant guy versus the art guy. Oh. Plant guy versus the art guy. Now, are there? Um, are you writing specifically gay romance, yeah. or is there a mixture? Like, what do you? What's the story here? Uh, well, I, as a gay man, want to write and read what I, you know, my you know, things that I see in my life. So I'm writing right now. I'm writing uh, gay romance, and Lisa's writing gay romance. And I actually have very little interest in writing Het, even though I'm bisexual, go both ways. But for some reason, I enjoy writing homosexual male, specifically, gay fiction. That just seems to be how my brain's wired. And yeah. <laughs> I just love the way you presented that. That was just that was great. <laughs> so yeah, so this is the the series that we have now is all good. I mean, as we have it planned right now, the other whiteboard that I have has there's a second whiteboard. <laughs> there's four whiteboards. <laughs> oh my god! I, I feel I'm going to need a picture. <laughs> of the whiteboard. Uh, you know, one of the other four whiteboards has a diagram of this business park that we're building with who works here, who interacts with whom on the, you know, next door or across the, across the way. And, you know, that kind of stuff. It goes along with the, the first five uh, books whiteboard. So you have all like, even the, the sub characters all like planned out and their interactions. Not just that, but you have to, you plant seeds like in AI, we planted a scene with a character, I believe his name was Patrick, uh, not the main character's uh, father, but a different Patrick. 
and he's going to end up in he's not even he's not even in the first five books he's in like book <laughs> seven or eight and we don't even talk to him we just, he just gets mentioned i think twice yeah exactly but so i guess you're serious plotters there's no pantsing involved here <sighs> The pan- the panting comes along when we're talking it out and we're like, ooh, what if we did this? Well, what if they were pilots, but they investigated why there were suspicious things and it turns out someone's smuggling, but then we have to go from the end point, work our way back and go, aha, that's why there's kitty litter. So we do our panting <laughs> verbally yes. and then Walter <laughs> enjoys the solvent of the markers as he writes it all on the board. Exactly. <laughs> I think that should be the tagline of today. Aha, that's why there's kitty litter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And there's there's little things that, that happen along the way because we do we do plot out, okay, um, in the romance genre, there are certain things like formulas that you kind of need to follow a little bit. Way stations. Um, yeah, exactly. Way stations to get there. But we don't follow everything. So like um, in in the next book that I'm writing, uh, as I needed a conflict, I threw in, hey, this guy has, uh, okay, I know that I'm old, but if anybody remembers <laughs> baby Jessica. In the well. Yes, baby Jessica yeah, in the well. Yes. One of the conflicts from our next book is one of the characters' sister is baby Kimberly. And baby Kimberly mm-hmm. fell in the well. And that was maybe, you know, 20 years ago. Now she's doing celebrity boxing. Uh, you know, and that kind of thing. So, yeah. So, so we 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 do plot, but I do a lot of pantsing when it does come to actual uh, the writing part. Well, having said that, Walter, if there's not a line in that book when the other person finds out about that and doesn't make some smart ass remark about Lassie falling down on the goddamn, floor, <laughs> they'll be held to pass. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're plotting it right now, guys. <laughs> it's all we are happens. in on it. Let me write that down. We are Can in the process. Quick, quick, get, get a marker. marker. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's nothing more frustrating than being in the car on the phone. Yes, and you can't write anything down. And you're exactly. just like, well, you yeah. have to remember it. Exactly. How are we going to do that? <laughs> you need a car whiteboard. <laughs> usually aren't you Walter aren't you usually in the car with the husband so yes. he's mobile he's that's fine that works no I, I want a car whiteboard now I want a car whiteboard no, now did they not safe did they not <laughs> exist I don't care if it's They've safe got to exist I'm I'm googling that right now there are whiteboards <laughs> that are like one foot by two foot that could live in your back seat and let the dog lick the marker off okay Oh, that would be bad. So, so how does your husband feel, Walter, about you writing romance stories? Is he like, don't give away our secrets? Or is he like, yes, I love this. Keep it up. Um, okay. Uh, I can explain this with a story. Oh, no. Okay, good. Short uh, answer. Yes, very supportive. Uh, long answer. Awesome. We were flying to, oh, where, oh, somewhere on vacation. And I was writing a scene. Because, you know, what do you do on a plane but write? Because, you know, we had like five hours. Mm -hmm. And I was writing a scene and I'm like, wait, how is this actually going to work? And then I kind of like made him move in his seat a little bit. And then I kind of moved over and then I'm like, okay, can I move my foot? Yeah, that'll work. Okay. All right. Go back to sitting, you know, go back to your drink. I'll go back to writing. (laughs) Did you basically use him as a Gumby posable figure in order to make sure something would work? To make sure that uh, parts would uh, line up, yes. <laughs> I support that. <laughs> I have 100% walked downstairs in, in our apartment. We have, like, my office is upstairs. And I've walked downstairs, and my partner's in his office. And I'm like, hey, I need you to run this with me. And and I was like, you stand here, you do this. You need sometimes, like, you know, like you said, posable Gumby people yes. to just show you, does this blocking work in this scene? Yeah. Yep. I love that he'll do that for you. That's amazing. Exactly. There was one scene in the prequel where when the audiobook guy was reading it or we were listening to the audiobook guy and giving our notes, I asked him if he had noticed that one of the characters during the main sex scene hadn't taken his shoes off, but he picked them up later. <laughs> well, taking, there's just, there was no way in the moment to organically have his shoes removed. 
but you know, they came off at some point. We're sure. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I feel like I could, I could make that logical leap as a reader. Yeah. Like I, I think yeah. I would be okay with that. Yeah. There's a lot of movement. Shoes can come off. Yeah. It's all good. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That brings up though, you just mentioned audiobooks. So are you publishing in audio and print and ebook or what's your platforms of choice? So for the books that I've written by myself, so I, I started a gay sci-fi action adventure series and I went broad. So I have it available uh, on Amazon and I've got it available on iTunes and or, you know for the audiobook. I've got it everywhere and I have audiobooks. And the thing is, though, that's that's one genre. For the romance genre, if you look at the top 50 books on Amazon uh, in the romance genre, 47 of those are in Kindle Unlimited. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, or at least in the mail mail. Uh, so, I, so we decided we're going to go Kindle Unlimited. Um, so we only publish on Amazon, but I have a lot of friends who say, you know, I, I do pod, uh, podcasts and audiobooks to get through the day. I'm like, let's, let's do that as well. So, um, I had a good response with publishing audiobooks of my sci fi series. So, why not try this? And it's it really well done. And plus, the guy that we have narrating for our gay romance, we have asked him to stay on and do all of them, which he has happily agreed. Uh, his act, his British accent, even though he's southern, his British accent is <laughs> on point. His, uh, I Lisa and I were listening to the auditions together, and I was I was kind of melting because I'm like, listen to this. You were switching. And yes. his, uh, his text robot voice i almost snorted out my nose i mean yeah because it got the it's not just the monotone it's that it puts the emphasis on the wrong syllable and you're exactly. just like what did it say but he did it perfectly <laughs> yeah oh that is wonderful so you're on um kindle unlimited for the romance series mm -hmm. and then you're wide for the sci-fi series correct and what's okay. the sci-fi name? So the sci-fi series is all about migration. Um, it, it's so the first book is called Migration Beginnings because, of course, it's about the beginnings of why they're migrating to another planet. Because I uh, I blew up half of Europe basically, um, so nice. but. Exactly. But in the as a side note, oh, look, we found a device. It's going to, you know, if we put it together and we get it working, it's going to take us to another planet. Um, so the first book is Migration Beginnings, and the second book in the series is migla Migration Knowledge. And each of those books is going to be about an ancient uh, mythology thing. So Migration Knowledge is about the Library at Alexandria. The next book in that series is uh, Migration Lost City, and it's about the lost city of Atlantis. So how do you find, so you're writing those and now you and Lisa are writing the romances and you work full time. Yes. When do you fit that in? Like, how do you fit in your writing schedule, both of you? For me, to be very honest, when I work full time, I have structure and therefore I can jump from thing to thing when I have it. But I was actually not working for the longest time. It's almost been a, I went about nine months without working at all. And I hardly got anything written mm -hmm. because it was oh, really? I, because my my daily structure. I thought, hey, I'm not working. I'm going to write every day, and then nothing. Too much then, choice. Exactly. And then when I finally do get something written, I give it to Lisa. Who <laughs> <laughs> waits until the very last second at the deadline, <laughs> or possibly past the deadline, and then goes, I don't need sleep. I'll just do it. Why didn't I do it before? <laughs> I'll never wait till the last second again. Exactly. That's a lot. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're, we have talked about doing uh, deadlines uh, in my head. The I do know that the next book will be uh, done-ish. And I don't know what stage Dunnish is by <laughs> September. So we'll see. This year? And I've, yes. given him, I've given him full permission to give me fake deadlines. Yes. But don't tell me they're fake. He did that once. I'm like, well, you just, there's no point in that. <laughs> exactly. I know it's fake. It has to be a guessing game. Which ones are fake? Which ones are real? Exactly. <laughs> I'm willing to will, play will along the world explode or not? Real. <laughs> there you go. So Lisa, are you a structured writer? You have time each day that you do it or no? Well, most of the, what I'm doing is taking the page and fixing it. And usually, like I say, I'm a terrible procrastinator. 
which is stupid because I'm not doing anything but reading fan fiction and watching old episodes of Parking Wars because, sure, that's good. Um, <laughs> I'll be like, okay, I have to do 15 minutes on and 15 minutes off by my phone alarm and then just get it done. I apparently don't have structure. I can't make myself do it. I'm an adult and I'm not in charge of me. <laughs> so... Where can people discover all of your books in case we named them all too quickly and they didn't write them down? Uh, well, there's a couple ones. I have a website called Walter Writes, so walterwrites.com. And if you go there, then all of my books are listed. And then there's, if you actually go to squidgywitty.com, it actually takes you just to <laughs> just to the section of my website that's about us. You're going to need to spell that. S-Q-U-I-D-G-I-E. W-I-T-T-Y dot com. See, I'm glad you made him spell it because that was not what I thought it was. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a combination of our screen names. Yes. I'm so excited you came to talk to us today. I am now, like I said, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I'm not a romance reader, but I am intrigued. <laughs> it sounds adorable. Thank I you. know. <laughs> We, we, and now I want to hear this audio book. Oh, hey, uh, Ian, who are, is our uh, narrator, he's, yeah, he's got he's awesome. support. Yeah. I will just melt. Yes. <laughs> yes. I should, oh, I should, but I should send you the his audition tape because his audition is, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Down. <Yeah. laughs> and on that note, thanks for listening. Quick, go read the book. <laughs> <laughs>